Well, this sure is a nice rainy day we've got in our zoo. I'm hoping it's going to brighten up a little bit later. But I've just seen we've got some notifications and... Oh, we passed quarantine. That's good. Let's get our new horse into the, the existing horse habitat, which is really hard to find in the rain. But it's around here. There it is. <laughs> um, and, oh, no. Our, our leopards died. Shira. Oh, bless. Oh, that's a shame. Oh, and we've lost a pangolin as well. Need to check up on the on the pangolins. I'm not sure how many we've got. Um, this isn't the right place. Hold on. Let's get their habitat and have a have a look. Oh, we've got too many actually. So let's. We've got an overpopulation. So I think that's including the one that just died as well. Let's release this one into the wild. That's 19 credits. That's not bad. And then yes, we're going to need to get a new leopard at some point. Uh, let's have a look at how many we've got now. Oh, we've got another male, which we need to release because they've had babies. The zoo's kind of in a mess right now. We've got everything's broken because of all our mechanics doing that research. <laughs> let's get a new female leopard and put them in quarantine while we remember. Oh, we've only got one very expensive one right now. So I'm not going to do that right now just because <laughs> we're not, we're not going to spend all of our credits on that. I'm going to ignore all these alerts because the... Uh, the mechanics will get to them when they're done with their research. They're just queuing to finish it off. Looks like we've got a challenge complete as well. Um, let's close these down and have a look at where we are with our research. Oh wow, we've done the India theme, the Europe theme and the Australia theme. So that's perfect. I'm going to stop all of those. Um, we don't need any more there. We have just need to do the South America, the Indonesian. Oh, we've taken them off Twilight as well but I, we know that the pieces we're after on in the Twilight pack, so I might just leave that. So we've got the classic theme. Um, the uh, They're not going to be the East Asia theme either. So the Indonesian theme and the South, Af South America theme. So uh, that's fine. And at least we've got a lot of our mechanics back, um, back on the job. I'm just going to train everyone up as well and uh, have a look at our staff rooms because I realized we've not actually put staff healthcare on all of these, which we were doing before. So it prevents them from being overworked. I'm just going to add staff healthcare to all of our staff rooms. And uh, hopefully that will that'll improve our, our staff's well-being. I know, I know it's not really a mechanic in the game, but they've put it in there. And I think we've got we've to lean into it. Now, one other thing I'm thinking is that we probably need some more drinks facilities. Because I don't think our guests are... Oh, they're not happy about the rain. They, look, they love the zoo. I, they can't get over how good the zoo is but they're thirsty and they wish they had an umbrella. Now we've got one umbrella shop, I think, here, um, in the middle here. Maybe we should add another, maybe even just here or around this section, add another section where we can have an umbrella shop and maybe another drink shop. Oh, a couple of the tables are broken too. I think if you go to, it might be in facilities. Uh, there's a place that you can see what's broken. I'm trying to remember where it is now. Is it? Oh, it's in crime, that's it. Oh my goodness, okay, let's just replace everything that's broken across the zoo. There we go, everything's brand new. <laughs> uh, if only they could do that in real life, I'm sure they'd love it. I'm actually going to copy uh, a few of these uh, shelters we've got just around the zoo in, in some of the new areas because we need to make sure we've got, we've got places for our guests to, to seek shelter. Okay, the rain is lightening up just as we're putting in more stuff, uh, more shelter for our guests. I'm trying, I think this is going to be too close to the paths on here. We can maybe add one here. Oh, that's where the talk is. No, I'm going to leave that for now. Um, I think we've probably got enough because I want to do something different over here anyway. So I'm going to leave that as it is. And then yes, add in... Oh, someone else has just passed away. Oh, it's one of our lechwe. Oh. We've got so many lechwe. <laughs> um, it's obviously still sad to lose one, but my goodness, we have way too many lechwe. <laughs> they live in such massive groups, it's crazy. I wonder if we've got, look how many lechwe we have. Oh, it's not as many as I remember. Oh, there's an extra, oh, he's injured as well. Okay, well, you need to have the vet called and they need to take you out and then you need to go because we've got too many males. Um, let's have a look at our giraffe. Have we, have, have we got any male giraffes? Yes, okay. I'm going to pause the game here 
we've got a couple of male giraffes here that have grown up now. So both of these boys are going to have to be released to the wild. Wow, look at them. That's amazing. Loads of credits. Loads and loads and loads of credits. We, we're going to need them for this episode. I have a feeling. <laughs> um, so it's, it's good that we're getting them now. It's good. It's definitely a good thing. Now, I think what I'm going to do is copy. We've got a couple of our leaf shops that we made earlier. I think I'm going to copy these in and have one here. And then move this restroom over and have one just on the other side of it. Um, if we can move these to about there and then have the other one because they've got different decorations on them. Can we fit this in? Yeah, that just goes into the rocks. That's fine. That that fits in well. And then we obviously need to take out these, uh, these actual shops. Um, I shouldn't have copied these ones probably. So we're going to need, um, let's go guest facilities. We're going to want just the uh, the basic ones. So I'm going to click uh, blueprints and turn all blueprints off. Now we've got just the basic shops is what we want. Um, and we're going to need some more water. They want more drinks. And we're also going to need another information center because that is where they sell umbrellas. So I'm going to add the information center in here. And then I'm going to uh, find another drink. What, what have we got over here on this side? So we've got gulpy soda and chief beef. Okay, so let's just get some water over here because we definitely need more water in this place. So I'm going to add that in. And now hopefully they'll both come with their own vendors. Let's just add them into the work zone. I'm going to just, I'm not going to increase anything else. I'm just going to do it on entrance guest facilities, add these two, and then where the staff are, we'll just add them into entrance guest facilities. Now, surprisingly, we've only got one security guard, but Lena's doing such a, a top job that uh, she's got a low workload. Like, it's just not even much to do. And there's never really much crime around the zoo. I know at the start, we um, we just replaced like 50 things, but that's because there were so many, like it'd been so long since we'd actually done that. And there'd only been, there's only like nine things or something that were actually broken. So I think we're doing pretty well, really. Um, looking through as well, I think all of our all of our kind of keepers and every, everyone are quite happy. We may have too many keepers. I'm just wondering whether we've got too many staff at this point or whether perhaps we can just continue expanding our zoo. Because I don't really like firing anyone, but continue expanding our zoo, but then not increase the number of staff and just kind of move people around uh, to try and organize it that way. Because I, I've noticed that our finances are struggling slightly, and uh, we're going to need to going to need to sort them out. So we've just done some research on the bonobos as well. I'm um, going to move them onto someone else. In fact, I'm just going to leave Dr. Doolittle to just do his general rounds of uh, of the animals to uh, to find out more about them and check that none of them are sick. Oh, and we've just done the Indonesian theme. So I'm going to take that off as well. Now we're just almost done with the South South America. And what was the last one? So the classic theme. Okay. So we're almost done with those. And I think most of what we want is the classic theme. Just to build like a little fountain area in the middle here. Uh, this is going to need tending to. Let's have that on every month. Uh-oh, one of our... One of our lecheries about to inbreed. I think this must be a sibling of... Oh, oh, it's a child of Lupin. Oh, okay. Well, we're going to release you into the wild and then we won't have this problem anymore. Um, I don't think they've got any more children here, but it does kind of alert you when it happens. So we can, we can catch that as and when it's about to happen. Power source has failed. Now oh, cool mechanic. It's fine. It's on the right maintenance. It's just, it's just a bit of a hiccup at the minute with all the mechanics. Oh, and you can see now our oh, zoo's going back into profit as well. So I think it probably... Oh, oh, it's going down. No, it's going up. I think we probably just needed a couple more shops to uh, to push all our guests through. Um, oh, there's already been a thing. Come on. Is it Linda? Come on. Get on it. Where's our security? And and they, to be honest, they could do with more of everything. They're kind of eh, about food and drinks. We can always just put more shops in and they'll, and they'll spend more money. Um... That's the only, that's the main complaint at the minute is that they're thirsty. So hopefully adding a couple more around the place will, will do just that for us. 
Um, and then, you know, we can have another another guest area down here when we finish off our Africa section. Um, so I'm hoping that's going to be enough for them generally. Um, because, you know, we've got a nice big one in here as well. Now, today we're going to be adding orangutans, finally. Um, oh my goodness, there's like a leucistic one. It's an albino. It is. Albino? Albino? Let me know. Let me know which one it is. Let's check out what group size they live in. I'm so excited. Because I don't think I've ever had them in any zoo before. So, And they're critically endangered, so they definitely, definitely qualify for this zoo. Um, we need one male and up to five females. Oh, wow, okay. So two would just be fine. Um... They're matrilineal, so it's the males related to alpha become outsiders. Yeah, okay, so that's pretty normal. It's basically, it's going to be one male and then a few females. And when we have the uh, the boys grow up, they're going to need to leave the zoo before they fight with their dad. Um, so I think we might as well just get these two. Um, they look pretty decent, and uh, I don't think we can afford this one, so we haven't got much of a choice. How long do they live? Live to 44, so the male's getting on a little bit, but you know, he's just gonna be an old older boy. He's still middle-aged. I'm um, gonna get him and get her. And then we need to look at the next species we're gonna be getting for our habitat, which is the Siamangs. Now, I've never had these either. This is all, this is gonna be completely new species this episode for me, so I'm su super excited to see them. We've got quite a bit of choice here. I think we should have a look at them in the Zoopedia as well. Um, so they're endangered. And what group sizes they live in? Oh wow, okay, so it's two to six. So five males and five females. They don't really mind, because it's a mated pair that lead the family. Oh, that's cute, I love that. Um, they're confident around humans as well, which I think the, uh, the orangutans were as well, which is, exactly what we like to see it means they're not gonna be stressed like that's really good um i think maybe we'll just order these by appeal and then select the best ones uh, within reason in case they're crazy expensive oh some of them are quite old we need to look at how how long they live um they live to be 40 so we don't want that 36 year old one that's a bit bit old for us but 15 is decent perhaps we should get one of these 17 13 right we're gonna get I think we'll just get these four cheaper ones um, right here because they're the highest ranked. So let's grab this one, uh, this one, and they're all from Frontier Zoo. And I've been told by you guys, if they're all from Frontier Zoo, then they won't be related, which is perfect because it's just the in-game ones. Um, in the past, we've we've gone, so this is from a different, different zoo. So if we've gone for that, if we get loads of them from the same zoo, they might all just be siblings that have been put on the market at the same time. So that's, that's going to be three females and one male. Uh, have we got another page? No, that's it. Okay. So if we refresh the list now. Yeah, these are quite expensive. I don't think we need the full six. I think five is probably uh, five is probably good. And the last animal is the Lar Gibbon. And we're going to have all of these in one habitat, which I'm so excited for. I know you guys had guessed it in the comments. I saw some of you talking about it. So I was like, okay, you guys probably know it's going to be these three. Um, so these are new with the tropical pack and I am super excited to get them in. I'm trying to think what, so let's have a look at the Zoopedia. Look at them, they're endangered. So they meet the criteria and it's again, two to six. It's the same as the Siamangs. So let's, let's just probably grab these four. It doesn't really matter how old they are in the sense that they've, we've only got four here and we can give them a good life. I think the oldest ones, I think they were either 13 or 17. They live to 40 as well, so they're very similar. So now that we've got all of our animals, let's send them all to quarantine. And now is probably a good time to start building out their habitat around here. So I'm going to do that now. I need to check what barriers that they can actually have. Um, I didn't think about that. So they need grade two higher than four meters. Let's have a look at the Siamangs. Grade three climb proof, higher than five meters, or we could use water. And then the orangutans, grade three climb proof five meters as well, or the same with water. But the first ones could be could swim, I think. The the gibbons could swim, so we couldn't use water anyway. So let's just get grade three, which is wooden logs. We're obviously gonna use those. We just need to make sure they're at least five meters high when we're placing them. So I'm gonna go through and build out kind of a a pretty large habitat for them now. I'm 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 not too worried about the sizes that they need because I mean, if we've got four orangutans, that's like a thousand. I can't imagine the Siamangs are gonna need too much. Let's say there's eight. 
I mean, they couldn't even have one that size, but it'd be, you know, a few juveniles. Let's say there's going to be another thousand and the La Gibbon. The same is going to be at 620. So, I mean, if we've got kind of 3000 square square feet, then I think we're absolutely fine. So I'm going to go through and start building out their habitat now. Okay, we've got 12,000 square meters here. So we're definitely reaching that 3,000 square meter limit. Um, and we've used, we managed to use a lot of like different elevation, which I'm really happy with. So we do need to make this the right height. I'm gonna edit the barriers, select all of them with the circle icon and then, and then drag them up. There they go, the controls disappeared for a second. And then drag them up to be more than five meters. So let's just have them be 5.1. Um, the whole way around. I'm happy that they're at different heights. It doesn't really bother me. Um, I think to raise them to all be the same height would end up looking a bit strange in some areas. So um, like it'd be unnecessarily high and I'd rather it not kind of block out sun where it doesn't need to. I think what we'll do is just turn this front edge to be one way glass on the other side going left to right. And then the guests can have a nice, a nice good view in to the habitat through here. And to be honest, that's probably all we're going to do because they're also going to see them when they go on the monorail, uh, not the monorail, when they go on the, uh, the gondola through here, they're going to, they're going to see, they'll be able to look over. If I click play, we can probably get a good view of it here. Okay. And as you see from the inside of the gondola, we've got a very nice chap here and then, uh, you can see straight in. So you definitely get a pretty good view of, uh, as he's looking in there, you get a pretty good view of the animals, which I just think is really cool. This ride is only slightly terrifying to me. <laughs> it's not even going that fast, but it, it kind of feels it when you're in the thing. Uh, average speed is 11 miles per hour, which is is not, you know, it's not it's not quick. <laughs> Everyone has passed quarantine now as well, so I'm going to send them all into the habitat. I think a few of them couldn't fit in the quarantine, so we just need to make sure that they get added to quarantine now. Oh, and we've lost one of our wild dogs. Oh, we need to get some uh, some more African wild dogs because I don't know how many we have. Should we have a quick look. Oh, have we lost them? Was that just one last play session? This is getting a bit weird. They're uh, they're stood at a very odd angle. I don't like this glitch that we found. I'm gonna move away from it because it's kind of freaking me out. <laughs> Let's uh, let's have a look. Oh, we've only got a few in here. So we need to get some females. It's not a very good breeding program if we don't have any females at all. I'm going to search for African wild dog. And uh, oh, there's only one female here, but we can at least get these other these other males and move them all across into quarantine. And just move our final uh, couple of animals that couldn't make it into the quarantine into the habitat as well. And we need to rename this habitat to be orangutan, siamang, and gibbon. That's a gonna be that's gonna be a crazy habitat. Can't, I can't wait for this. <laughs> Here comes the first out of all. Oh my goodness. This is one of the gibbons. They're so tiny. Look at them. Oh, we need to probably move, <laughs> move the benches out of the way. Oh my goodness. Okay, I'm gonna move that bench there. We still need some seating for the toilets, but we need to open this door so that um unblock this access way so that our keepers and staff can actually get in here. <laughs> Who else have we got? Oh, another gibbon. Oh, there's a few people. Oh, there's a couple of people in the same spot right there. Oh, just more gibbons. Oh, this is getting a bit scary. Oh my goodness, and everyone else just arrived at once. Come on, guys, let's move out the way so we can see you. <laughs> oh, there go the gibbons! Oh my goodness, is that how they move? I can't get over that run. That's amazing. <laughs> look at the run. Oh, and look at the Siamangs as well. They're cool. Are they the one with the tail? I thought they were the one with the tail. No, I'm thinking of Spider Monkey, not Siamang. Yeah, the Spider Monkey's the one with the tail that's kind of like a fifth limb. That's a bit interesting that they like used to swing around. 
And this is our our chunky boy, our big male Papa Orangutan. <laughs> I've run out of things to say about him. Look, look at him though. He looks awesome. I'm uh, I, so I'm so psyched that we've got him in the zoo. Right, we're gonna pause the game though because there are they're not all in yet, but um, the others are on their way, and this is not at all appropriate for them as a habitat. Firstly. The, uh, the whole barriers, I'm just going to do it on both sides, need to be climb proof. So now, hopefully, they can't escape. Let's just check that for everyone before we carry on. Okay, the orangutan can't escape. The siaman can't escape. Can the gibbons escape? Oh, that's another siaman. Gibbons, oh, they're all kind of grouped up. That's so cute. And the gibbons can't escape either. They all will benefit from being with each other in the same habitat, which I don't think I showed, but um, they all, let's let's look at the, uh, the where is it, interspecies enrichment. They've got the Siamang and the La Gibbon, and they have the, the same, the Orangutan, the Siamang, and the Siamang have the two of them as well. So, I mean, it, it, if they're on there, it means they're on there for the other ones as well, but I just wanted to go through and show you. <laughs> so, you know, they're, they're all going to benefit from sharing a habitat with each other. And look at that, how cool is that? Like, look at that for a shot. Love it with the with the gondola in the background. So cool, so cool. Um, we're gonna need to add this into the work zone, which is what I was gonna say. We need to do right now. Um, let's add this into Asia End. I think this is the last habitat actually in our Asia section of the zoo, which is crazy. So there's gonna be the four of them there, and then we need to add it into Zoo as well. And I think everything else is in Zoo, so we've done a pretty good job there. Oh, we need to add these two into Zoo as well. Uh, now everything is in Zoo. But yeah, we finished off. This is the end of the Asia side of the habitat, of, of the Zoo. How, how crazy is that? That's, it's scary, we're getting to the end of the Zoo. <laughs> uh, we need to move all of our dogs into their habitat, which is just there. We can very easily do that. Because they've all passed quarantine. Now, one thing I'm going to do in this habitat first is I'm I'm going to try and make it so that this habitat just uses natural uh, natural enrichment, like climbing enrichment. We can add in some of the other bits, like the toys for them, but um, I want to not do what we've done previously, which is build like man-made structures um, and try and just use trees and natural vines and things like that, so they've got enough climbing um, to enjoy the habitat kind of naturally. So if I said natural enough, <laughs> that's, that's the vibe we're going for. Uh, so I'm just going to put the rocks in now so we can see what we're working with and then put all the plants and the climbing enrichment in after. I think what I'm going to do as well is I'm going to add a nice water section in. I'm trying to think where to put it, but I think I might have a, a, a two tier waterfall in this habitat or I might do a three tier like we did it over here it just looks so nice and you've got the multiple tiers i might do i might do another three tier waterfall just because i can see the land the land is asking me to do it <laughs>
Okay, I think the waterfall looks pretty cool now. I'm quite happy with that. Uh, we do need to carry on with the other rocks though, so I'm going to do that now. Okay, I think we've added quite a few rocks there. Um, that's probably enough for what we need. <laughs> um, and we've moved our orangutan that got caught in the water there. And look at them. Oh, oh dear. Animal welfare has attracted protesters. Oh, that's because they've got the wrong... Um, what have they got? No, space? Is it to do with the amount of climbing? I think... Oh, I think because of... Um, because of the fact we haven't put any climbing in yet, we're now getting welfare about the uh, the animal space issues because they've not got enough space. And the only thing I can think of is they've not got enough climbing area because I've not got anything yet. So um, I'm just going to pause the game uh, for now because before we do that, I wanted to rename some of our animals that we've got. And I also wanted to check in on where our mechanics were in their research. And it looks like our mechanics are done. They're finally done. So I'm going to take them off everything, let them just do the job they're supposed to be doing. <laughs> and uh, I'm also going to have a look and just train up our staff again, because they always they always need, need training, bless them. Um, but we should now have all the pieces we need here to build a little bit of a fountain. And look at all of these animal sculptures we have. Now I'm hoping we're going to have some that relate to the monkeys next door uh, or the apes next door. Are they monkeys or are they apes? Or I guess they're a mix of both. I'll let you guys tell me. So I've thought about what we want to put in here and I don't actually think we want to put a statue in, uh, a fountain in, but I do kind of want to put statues in. So I think what we're going to do is find the gibbon statue. Ah yes, okay, I remember this. So the tropical... Uh, gibbon one we've only got the uh, the head so I think what we might do is maybe make a little bit of a rock feature in the middle uh, if we can get on nice get a nice rock like this one and then have uh, the gibbon sit on top of it so I think what we want to do is search for tropical yeah and then we can get our human legs um, now I'm going to put these facing I think this is pretty much straight on the park area. Um, have them facing this way. And then I'm going to control X this and move it up. And I've turned random rotation off. Um, so now I should just be able to click on construction and then click on the torso piece. And it's already all kind of aligned, lined up. I just need to adjust the height. Um, but it should all be in line from every other axis. So um, that's at least saved us some time. I'm going to do the same again. And I'm going to put the gibbon head on and probably put it about about here in fact it doesn't look like it's filling the collar but i think that is the design of the collar as well yeah i think it's supposed to be like this i might put a slight angle on the head as well so it looks a bit interesting a bit different there you go we've got our very terrifying gibber <laughs> at that. Look how scary that is. Um, okay, well, we've got our gibbon in there. Um, I think there must be more gibbon stuff. Yeah, we've got these as well. Um, so we've got a few gibbons that I think we could, it would be cool if we hung from the trees or something, maybe. Um, so I think we might just do a few things like this to add some of the, the gibbon, the orangutan, and the siamangs around this habitat, this, uh, this area.
Okay, so we've added a few things around here. Didn't have much in the way of orangutan um, scenery. So I've just put, there's a, there's a light there that a night will light up. And then we've got a little orangutan face. Um, and then we've just put a few of the uh, the, the Siamangs and, uh, and Gibbons. Look at that Siamang. Siamang and Gibbons just around the place. So I think it spices up this area a little bit and just kind of gives a nod to the habitat that's next to it. Because then obviously over here we have the beautiful habitat in question. That's actually not so beautiful right now because it does need some climbing enrichment and plants. And I think we're getting to the time now where we're going to add in some climbing enrichment. Now I want to just filter by uh, foliage type, is it? No, it's not that. Property climbable, right. Now these are all the trees that are climbable from Asia. These are all the tropical trees trees that are climbable from Asia. So we've got quite a lot to work with here. We've got um, a tangled liana, which I think is uh, I think they're like vines. Um, yeah, which we can attach between trees. Um, so I'm very tempted to build some natural climbing area with these trees. We've got mangrove apples that can go around the waterfall and then tamarinds and willows to go around the rest of the habitat. I think that should be sufficient. And then we'll put in some more, some more plants after as well. Okay, we've added enough trees and oh my goodness. Oh no, the lemurs animal welfare has attracted protesters. It's probably because we've got like 50,000 lemurs now. Um, oh no, they're okay. What's wrong with you guys? Oh, maybe it's the ring-toed lemurs? Oh yes, okay. There's way too many ring-toed lemurs. It's been the red rough for too long. Now it's those guys. Um, okay, and then uh, we've got all our animals here should be fine because we've just put enough uh, climbing in for all of them and they're happy. So the orangutans can't use quite the same number of trees as the uh, the siamangs and the, the gibbons can. But look, they can go all over. Um, but they can still uh, they can still use lots, so it's it's still fine. Got a couple of scimitar horned oryx as well, who are outside of the gender ratio. We bred so many oryx though. How amazing is that? Like we've got so many of them. I know, I know that we're, we've got too many now, <laughs> but um, it's still incredible that we've bred so many. Look at them climbing down. See, they can use the trees. Oh, look at those. Look at the gibbons enjoying this. That's so cool. 
And then we've got our orangutan at the bottom. Our big male. Just walking around. We need to make sure the whole uh, place is actually suitable for them though. So we still need to amend the terrain uh, so that it's appropriate. Because at the minute we've not got nearly an enough long grass for the Siamangs. And we, you know, they're all going to have different ones. So I'm just going to line it up so that they've all, they're all happy with what the, the gen, what the terrain makeup is like. Oh, it says he's outside of the gen, gender ratio. That's interesting. Why is that? Maybe it's just that they've not, um, they've not bonded yet or something. Well, we'll see what happens with them, but I'm sure he'll be fine. Can maybe look at getting another orangutan as well. No, it's just males. I was hoping for more females. Okay, uh, let's let, let's put some more trees in. If we take off climbable, we can we can add loads more trees in. So we're just gonna fill up this area um, and then add some normal enrichment in as well. And we're also going to first paint the terrain so that it matches what they actually want. Okay, so that is suitable for everyone. Everyone is now happy. Um, the only thing is we haven't actually got any shelter. So I think we may have to add in some um, some shelter, which we could also also double as, um, as climbing area. But I'm gonna put that over on this side, kind of around the back to give them a bit more privacy. And it's not gonna be a massive structure. It's just gonna be one that's a, it's a reasonable size that they could use. Okay, hopefully that will add, that's added a bit more to their climbing area as well, which is good. They've got a little bit more to climb and uh, they should have enough hard shelter now as well. So it looks like the gibbon, sorry, it looks like the siamangs and the orangutans are okay. I just need to check in on the gibbons, see how they're feeling about it. They're happy as well. Why are you stood right at the edge of the habitat? Strange little, strange little one. Um, they do need more enrichment though. They haven't got any enrichment. So I'm going to add in their enrichment now and then do the final touches of nature at the end. Okay, we've got a couple more females in here as well. So I think if we get another, let's let's sort them by appeal. If we get these top two uh, females, then we've got a little a little group of them that our orangutan can hopefully get into the group of. Because maybe it's that they're not supposed to have a, like one male and one female. It's supposed to be either just a solitary male or a male and at least two females. So that's what I'm wondering now. So I'm, I think, oh, we've got we've got some welfare protesters around these red rough levers because we've probably just got way too many of them. There's our classic thing. Oh no, it doesn't say that. What, what is wrong with it? What's wrong with your welfare? They've not got enough space. space. Yes. That's because you're massively overcrowded. Okay, that's uh, that's fine. We'll just uh, we'll just get rid of you. Don't worry. We'll release you into the wild. Um, maybe it's time that Mort got rehomed because this is too stressful for him probably. And then we'll just release a number of the more senior. I can tell you what. We'll leave the two the two oldest male and females, and then we'll release the others that can be released. I think I accidentally just sent one to be stored in the trade uh, trade center as well. So we'll have to see when that one comes through. There we go. Let's uh, let's release you to the wild. 
I have a feeling that will get rid of some of our issues. Oh no, um died. Oh, bless. I've had them for a while. Oh, well, you will be missed. Now, I think we should probably rename some of these animals. So, going from the name list, I'm going to call our big male Charlie. Then we've got his fee uh, female orangutan. I'm going to call her Iris, even though she's run off the screen. There she is. <laughs> then we've got one of our gibbons is going to be called Blue, who's enjoying the sprinkler currently. This gibbon who's running around near the ice block is going to be called Marlin. This male running around near a willow is going to be Dusty. Uh, this little gibbon who's running around. <laughs> I love how they run. Look how they run. I love it. Um, is going to be called Aviva. And this Siamang is going to be called Sage. Oh my goodness. Sage is going out of control. This Siamang is going to be called Juliet. Our male Siamang is going to be called Romeo. Wink, wink. And our last female Siamang is going to be called Pebbles. Now, we do need to make sure that this water is going to be safe. And currently, there's no treatment out here. So I think what we're going to need to do is add some water treatment to the back of our food area that's not going to impact the guests. I'm going to stick one in there and then add a path, a staff path. It's probably just going to have to be some stairs that leads down um, and connects up. Okay, so we've just added, I mean, it's by no means perfect, but we've just added some water and power here so that the habitat is at least going to be safe, um, which is exactly what we need. Um, look at the water. We can see that the water catchment now catches this waterfall area. So all of that is going to be clean drinking water for them. Now we've got other, other two orangutans have passed their quarantines. We're going to move them in and I'm hoping that that is going to fix their social issues. Either that or I'm just adding more fuel to a fire. <laughs> so the uh, the final thing we need to do is we need to get some donation bins in and we need to put some display boards up. Okay, we've got a bit of education in there just to show them what's in the habitat. It's not an ideal location because of uh, where the solar panels are. And I don't really want to be adding another solar panel just, just for this. We just added one for the water. Oh, Alicia's just passed away as well. Oh, okay, bless her. Well, we will take her out of the zoo. But yeah, now that the kind of outside is set up, I think this habitat is fairly functional. I do want to check that the, uh, the new females kind of fix our, our issue we were having. But it seems like everyone in here is actually having a pretty good time. And you can get some pretty cool views over the habitat. Oh, it looks like our new orangutans have arrived. There we go. Are they going to find the others in the group? They're very cute, aren't they? Look at them. I don't know if they're making a beeline for the ball. Okay, well, the rest of your group is over here. Oh no, that's a that's a bobbin pin. <laughs> that's not the rest of your group. Maybe they know where they are. Let's uh, let's have a look. Where are you? Okay, there's three of you now. Go meet the new females and and bond. I am sure you can be together. If anyone knows why, then he's not bonding with the others. Please do let me know. I don't think. I mean, he's not got. Yeah, he's not. They're not related in any way. I think maybe it was just because it was one and now it should be fixed if we uh if we get him together if we uh, if we move him over i'm gonna move him down here so we can meet one of the new ones and then hopefully this will fix his uh his social issues okay guys let me know in the comments i can't figure it out i don't know why he's not joining the group um can you guys let me know in the comments if you do know 
um, because I'm a bit stumped right now. He's got three females in here, so you'd think he'd be happy, but I don't think he is. <laughs> so, I mean, he's happy enough. He's playing with his with his grab ball. He's just, uh, he's not linked in with the rest of them. So, bless him. Look at his little face. I hope you guys have enjoyed this episode. If you have, please give it a like. It really helps the channel out, and I'll see you in the next one.